Hey, everybody, I have a governor in the studio with me. He is a very handsome young man. He's an intellectual. He's an athlete. And he's one of your two governors. I know you think you only have one governor, Governor Tom Corbett. Governor Tom Corbett represents all of the grown-ups or all of those voters across Pennsylvania who like to think that they are grown-ups. But the young folks of Pennsylvania also have a governor, and we have been very lucky to have this governor be someone from the city of Pittsburgh and one of our local high schools. His name is Eric Rauticus. Eric, welcome. Governor, I should say. Uh Welcome. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Now, most folks probably don't know that there is a huge program in Pennsylvania and across the United States called Youth and Government, run by the YMCAs. It's been around for a long, long time. And basically what it means is young people across the Commonwealth have representatives. Yeah. Uh, and in this case, you represent them as their governor. Yeah, I do. It's, it's, really, it's really an honor. It's a giant national program. There's 65,000 kids about nationally, and um, we make up a portion of that in Pennsylvania. And we have senators, House of Representatives. We have a judicial branch with um, Supreme Court lawyers of Pennsylvania. We have a lobbyist corps, a, um, a news corps, a press corps. And, um, and then we have a governor, and I have my staff. So I get the honor of serving the, the youth of Pennsylvania for one year. And I, it's, I'm super excited. It's really an honor. And you were just sworn into office, I believe, back in April, correct? Yep, yep. April 22nd, I think, was the day. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, you were injured during a championship swimming meet because you're a, a great athlete. Yeah. Uh, and then went out to Harrisburg, got sworn in as governor, and then your bus was in an accident on the <laughs> way back. Uh, re- seriously, do you have yeah. a black cloud hanging over your head? <laughs> no, but it was, it was actually, I was in a bike race, actually, oh, okay. down in, in Pittsburgh, and I got in a crash on Tuesday night. I really couldn't even walk on Wednesday, but, you know, this program, it means so much to me as it means so much to so many kids across the country. And um, so I, you know, got up to Harrisburg, had a great weekend, um, getting bills passed and everything, and then I, re- I was able to get elected as governor. So Now, you yeah. actually had to run for office, and you had an opponent. Yeah, yeah. It was, um, we started, so I actually started with six opponents, uh, me and five other opponents. There were six of us. And um, we go through a primary system, you know, and we limit it down to two by the time we get to the conference. And we spend a week with um, oh, I, my campaign manager. We were getting out buttons. We were getting out flyers. We were doing all kinds of stuff, getting our message across to um, to the youth. And, and it worked, and we got elected. So I'm, I'm super excited for Cause, everything. Because you have some colleagues. I am Eric Rodriguez. And I am running to be your PA Youth Governor. I am so honored to have this opportunity, and I will be so honored to represent you and, and be your governor next year. Into my platform and what I want to do as governor. YAG 365. I want to build a YAG community that who can have be been elected and to youth and government who are from Pittsburgh as well, correct? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really a great. It was a great year for um well, out of my school we have a program. It, it, I'm go to Pittsburgh Obama mm-hmm. and um and I was elected as youth governor, a great great friend friend named Ben Junker. He was elected as um youth lieutenant governor and we got um, also the elected, we got editor-in-chief of the Pennsylvania Press Corps. She was elected from our school, too, named Anna Vitti. Yep. Okay, so that's, so we have a nice, we have a good representation among the youth in government in Pennsylvania. Now, during the course of this year, Eric, um, do you as elected representatives um, for young people a- around the Commonwealth, do you have a specific ag- agenda that you get to set as the governor, or is it sort of a collective agenda? And is it focused on issues for Pennsylvania teens, or do you look at broader issues? Um, well, there's a couple of different things. So, the, mainly as youth and government elected officials, we really try to help run the program. That is the program. But at the same time, we do try and um, to address different issues that especially affect youth within our commonwealth and within the nation. So, um, you know, this year I'm sure we'll be focusing a lot on education and you know all all that kind of stuff uh, on a state basis. But then maybe also as a collective effort of youth and government nationally on issues that matter to the youth. What are some issues i mean we hear a lot about bullying is that is that a topic that that's a a part of your discussion or are there give me some ideas of of some of the topics that you all are talking about 
Um, yeah, definitely bullying is you know an important issue that we all face. But really, what we, what we're big on, especially with all the budget cuts and everything, is um, keeping education funding where where it needs to be, because it is very true that you know the youth is the future of this country, and uh, we need an educated populace of youth. So um, that's what we're huge on this year, and what I'm sure will be huge on for many years. And when you talk about education funding, what are the young people saying? Because you know when we talk about education funding, uh, and I think as somebody who's worked in government, I know there's been a big push, um, you know, math and science. But there's a whole cadre of adults out there who are arguing that we need to make sure arts stay in the schools. We need to make sure athletics don't get cut. So um, where do you stand? I, I stand personally on a holistic approach to education that um, we, we need, you know, our math and science and English roots, but we also need the arts and the sports to bring the whole school together. And and I, and I stand personally, you know, even more on a level that it needs to go back to more of the local board of education's making the decisions on what needs to happen within their schools, rather than um, you know big government doing at times. So there's, but all of us across youth and government actually have different opinions on where we stand and what needs to happen with education. But well, where we all stand together is that it needs to get better, and there needs to be a um, educated debate about where where education needs to go within the Commonwealth and within the country. Where are our elected officials going wrong? Do you think? Uh, I, I mean, as you as you all as you sit around with the young elected representatives, I mean, and you look at say our state legislature or yeah. our state senate or even our, our our Congress and our United States Senate, you know, are you guys ever sitting around where you say, Jesus, if those men and women would just take our example, what would it be? It would be compromise, and, and compromise is the solution, and compromise is the way our system was made. It was made so that people of all different political spectrums have their, you know, they have their set in stone opinions, but when we get together at the table, we, we have to compromise. And when we compromise as America, we come up with great real solutions, practical solutions that help our country. And, and more and more I, I see, and uh, many youth see, that, that people aren't compromising, and when there's no compromise, there's no solution. How are you seeing compromise work within your group? Can you give us an example of, of some issue or some topic where uh, when you started out at point A, everybody was on, you know, 50 different pages yeah. and you worked it out? Yeah, so I actually just got back from this thing called um, Conference on National Affairs. And it's a big, big program that uh, has about 700 kids from youth and governments all across the nation. So most states were represented. represented. And there was one one bill in particular, and this was uh, the many states now requiring ultrasounds before an abortion. Okay, so everyone comes to the table with so many different opinions on abortion. You know, there, there are so many different ones. But as youth in this conference, we came together on um, on the issue, and and there was very passionate debate. But what we could see as a group is that you know the government. Might, d does not have the right to infringe on those individual rights. And even though many people are so opposed, op opposed to abortion, you know, we came together and said, you know what, that's, that's your personal opinion, but, um, but together we have to protect the individual rights of Americans. And um, so we came and, and passed that proposal. So just situations like that, when, when people come and, and when you can look sometimes over uh, morals and, sometimes, and look to compromise with um, people from all sides of the, you know, both sides of the aisle. What do you think is driving the stalemate uh, in our politics, both at the statewide level and at the national level? As somebody who's yeah. getting, getting his own taste of it um, for the youth of the, the state. Yeah, um, it, that's a very interesting question. And if you ask both sides of the aisle, they'll give you very different answers. So um, I... I'm asking you. Yeah, you're I don't care me. what both sides of the aisle think. I want to know what you think. Okay, so this I is... might want to vote for you someday. <laughs> yeah. I actually, to be honest with you, Eric, I actually would like to vote for you Thank already. You. Thank you so much. <laughs> so this is Eric Rodica speaking, not Youth Governor speaking here then, just to clarify, you know. Okay. I don't want, um, but, um, but what I see is that there was a hard shift to the right for the Republicans with the Tea Party movement. Okay, so and, and what the Republicans, they, they had a grasp, grasp on the... Um, on the you know moderates for a while so when they hard shifted to the right in 08 and a little bit before in 06 um, the Democrats saw it as an opportunity to grab the um, the middle of the road kind of politicians and so 
You have an entire country of Republicans and Democrats trying to please their bases, yet fight over this, I mean, it must be 10%, 20% of our country of voters that are in the middle, kind of. And, and it's just this fight over this little group that is so, um, that, that's just been going on for many years now. And, and You sound like you find it frustrating. Oh, it is. It is. And I, and I don't think there's... Um, and I don't think there's anyone who doesn't really, but but at the same time, I um I do see hope in the whole situation. I mean, our system is, I mean, democracy is so flawed, but at the same time, it's so perfect in my opinion, and it's um it's just a beautiful thing. And uh, and we have a quote at Youth in Government. Actually, Benjamin Franklin said it, and we use it so much. Democracy must be learned by each generation, and we truly believe that. And that's in Youth in Government, we try to teach democracy to the next generations. So. You know, I see it working out in the future, and I and I see us coming together again. And just right now, we're we're in a hard time, but we'll get over it. We'll get through it. If you're just tuning in, my guest is one of your two Pennsylvania governors. Now you have Governor Corbett; he's the one we all elected to go live out in Harrisburg. But the youth of Pennsylvania have their own governor, and his name is Eric Rauticus, and he is from Pittsburgh. Uh, so he's the Pennsylvania youth governor, and he's joining me here in this half an hour, and we're getting some of his impressions about government and politics. And I love what he just said. He used a quote uh, that comes from Benjamin Franklin, and he said, democracy must be learned by each generation. If you have a question for Eric, 866-391-1020, 866-391-1020, dollar bank instant access at kdkaradio.com. Don't forget, you can friend me, John Pro on Facebook. When we get back, Eric actually had some legislation passed at the national level that relates to Title IX. And as you know, Title IX is that legislation that gives women girls equal opportunity in high school sports i talked a lot about that last night because there was a fantastic column in the trib relating to that yesterday so we'll ask eric a little bit more about that and we'll learn a little bit more about the work that those elected students do in the youth in government program 866-391-1020 dollar bank instant access at kdkaradio.com you're listening to the voice of pittsburgh news radio 1020 kdka Hey, never let it be said that John Pro can't line up the most powerful, the most influential, the most significant newsmakers in the state of Pennsylvania. In the studio with me right now is one of your Pennsylvania governors. If you're just tuning in, you might think to yourself, what does she mean by one governor? One of the governors. You actually have two. You have Governor Tom Corbett whom we all love. You might disagree with him, but you got to love him. But if you are a young person in Pennsylvania, that is to say someone not old enough to vote, you have your own governor. And fortunately, he's actually from Pittsburgh. His name is Eric Rauticus. Eric, it's so good to have you with me. I'm Thank enjoying you. our conversation. Now, we're not only lucky to have you as the governor of Pennsylvania, you have several other elected officials who are from the Pittsburgh area serving youth in government. Yep. And you took 25 Pennsylvania legislators, yeah. youth legislators, to a big conference down in the Blue Ridge Mountains recently. Yes, we did. Okay. We did. Tell me a little bit about that conference. And I know you were trying to get some legislation passed that relates to Title IX. And practically, it is an exercise for your group. But ultimately... Some legislation that gets passed by youth in government actually does go on to capture the, atten the attention of Congress yeah, and become yeah. law. Yeah. So let's start there. Tell me a little bit about the conference. Okay, so this is um, YMCA's Youth Conference on National Affairs, and it, it was the 45th, 45th edition of it. It was held in a, the Blue Ridge Mountains down in North Carolina on a beautiful, beautiful YMCA facility on a mountain, really. And it's a collection of 700 kids, youth, from um, from most of the 50 states that represent their state youth and government. So we, we, you know, like it's the best of the best. We always say, and it's um, and it's just this awesome experience. And we do go through the um, legislative process. Everyone brings a bill, and we pass, you know, around we passed around 30 bills this year, and one of those happened to be mine. And I was really honored to, you know, go through the process and get mine passed. And it did did relate to Title IX. Okay, so. for folks who don't know, a lot of folks don't know what Title IX yeah, is yeah. or was. Title IX, by the way, is celebrating its 40th birthday. I'm very happy about that, and I don't know a hill of beans about sports. What's Title IX? Okay, so Title IX was passed, as you said, 40 years ago, and it was, it was, and actually what it says is that it was, um, 
it, it didn't relate to sports at all when it was originally passed. It was just relating to equality between men and women. And it really is, um, you know, taken a life of its own in good and bad ways and, and really became to relate to sports at high school and collegiate levels and really created a lot of the equality we see today. It gives, it gives young women the same opportunities yeah. to compete in sports as young men have always had. Yeah, and so in Title IX, I, I love Title IX. It's a great it's great. That we had it in because you're an athlete yourself. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm a swimmer and and uh, I love athletics in general. But what my proposal um, covered was there's one part of Title IX that was in 1979 interpreted it, and they made what a, it was a three prong test. And um and for colleges you have to pass this three prong test in order to um you know be passed and approved by Title IX. And the first prong of this test is um is it makes the ratios of your student body. So, for example, if 40% of your students at your university are men, then 40% of your athletic population must be men. So, um, so in a perfect world, this is great. So, but, what my, but realizing that we don't live in a perfect world, what my proposal does is kind of reinterprets that test so that, um, because what this test has done, in my opinion, is that it's, taken, it's made this fake haze of equality. It's fake equality is what this test done at universities because instead of raising women's programs to where the level of men's programs were, what they've done is just cut men's programs or at times even forced women to participate, which isn't right on any level. So what my proposal does is it brings Title IX back to its original speed Spirit of real, um, you know, equal growth, and with we're still requiring equal funding, equal access to facilities, and all all the equalities that Title IX guarantees. But what it does is it takes off the limits, and it takes off. I mean, it doesn't let universities cut any more programs because because of that one test. Yeah. Okay. And so this passed. So you were able to convince seven hundred other youth representatives from across the United States of America that that your piece of legislation as you had written it um, was worthy of not only consideration but of passing uh, I didn't cons- convince all 700 but um, oh, wow. I got more than half you got more than that's all that's all that's all it takes <laughs> that is that's all it takes it's more than half um, for people who don't um, don't know a lot about this program if they have children how do they get their young folks involved in youth in government and why should they because right now a lot of adults a lot of adults are sick of government yeah they really are so um what good does it do them as parents to ask their children to get involved in a program like this okay so if you're a parent what what I'm the okay, so let me say why it's good to get involved in this program first of all okay so in our schools we teach civics which, which is good. Not in every school. <laughs> okay, so in most schools there, there, there are civics classes, and, um, and it's important to learn how your country runs. But as we all know, not all kids, and including myself, we don't always pay attention in, in all classes in school. And in a, in a dry class like civics, at times, kids can tune out. What youth in government does is it gives children and youth a hands-on experience of what civics is, how our country is run, the problems with our country, the great things about our country, which there are so many, and it really gives them that hands-on experience of, you know, how complicated our system is, and really, and and it's so important our system's so complicated, so just random things can't get through. Hey, if you have a question for Eric, 866-391-1020, 866-391-1020, you actually have a dollar bank instant access question from Ed in... uh Oakland, California. Oh, nice. Ed must be a fan of yours. And he says, if you were elected governor of Pennsylvania, okay. if you were the real elected governor, what would your first action be? Huh. That's, that's an interesting question. And my first action, it wouldn't be a specific thing. It would be more of a, um, a mentality. You know, I, I would want to try to bring the people together as a leadership because, because it's not the role of the governor to... Um, to really do things in a sense is the role of a governor to be a leader and let the legislative branch create the change that the state needs. So, and I think that, you know, you need that unifying force and that's what I try to be, but I, you know, who knows if I could do it, but um, I don't know. It, it seems to me as if you have a pretty good handle on it. What other positions in, in government did you serve in before you were elected governor? Um, yes. Yeah, so as a freshman in youth and government, I was a senator, which was a great experience. As a sophomore, I was elected as a committee chair and, on, and in the House of Representatives, which was another great experience. And then um, this year, as a junior, I was elected 
as a committee chair again, but this time in the Senate. So I went back to the Senate and, um, and I ran for governor as a senator. And I um, got elected, so now I'm a governor. So. You're just like Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. But, you know, uh, I couldn't help but say that. Yeah. Um, before I let you go, Eric, I want you to have an opportunity to um, share with us one or two more of your thoughts or quotes that are used by youth in government. I loved what you said earlier. Uh, democracy must be learned by each generation. Uh, and you made a comment off the top of your head that our system is so flawed. And mm -hmm. it is imperfect, but it is perfect. Yeah, yeah. And I truly do believe that. And it's the sense that, um, because, and a lot of people complain, like, how how long the system is and, like, how, how hard it is to get things changed. And, and, and in a lot of ways, I think that's what makes our system so awesome. Because, because it's not right for... Um, for ideas just to all of a sudden be click and um and made into law there needs to be a long long process so that um things can be worked out and um and i'm not always saying the process leads to the best things for the country but it, but it tries and it's by far the best best process in the world um and and i truly truly believe that okay if folks need to reach you yeah as the governor as the youth governor of pennsylvania how can they get a hold of you um so either google YMCA Youth and Government of Pennsylvania, or just go to ymcapa.org, and um, on that page, that's our youth and um, youth and government page of Pennsylvania. There'll be a there'll be tabs, and, and one will be contact us. And if you can go to that, there's a nice little form to fill out, and um, and we can you'll get right in contact with us. Okay, Eric, I really appreciate you taking the time to stop by the studio tonight and uh, fill us in about your early experience oh, as you. Pennsylvania's youth governor and talk about the conference that you attended. You're in office for a full year, correct? Yep, one year. Okay, I hope that you will keep us posted and let us know if there are issues among the youth in Pennsylvania that you're dealing with that we should be talking about on the radio. I wish you all the best in your year. Thank you. Thank you so much. And just, uh, you know, have faith in the youth. We're a good, we're a good group of kids. We're going to do great things as you, in youth and government and in the world. Yep. I'll tell you what, if everybody's like you, Eric, ha. I am I am optimistic. It's good everyone's not like me. It's good. <laughs> hey, you're listening to the Voice of Pittsburgh News Radio 1020 KDKA.